Thank you for all those that came to the end of the day with us. It's really great to conclude such a day in general. The, everyone is a prisoner here. Because of it, I must leave. I want to comment and say something about that. I want to thank all those who helped in the preparation of this conference. Thank you. I'll thank specifically my colleagues later and other people from the history department. I'm uh, happy and emotional because of the publications and the improvement in the quality of our products and uh, I'm happy about the preparations we, together. Professor Kadesh is also present. I should have known that the armored corps are really the story. Thank you very much for everything that you do concerning the history of the fights of Israel. A day will come when the things that today look a bit updated will then look even more important and be analyzed deeply. I thank Avidror, my commander. I learned a lot of values from him, and I've learned that it seems that I was not clear enough in my words, and I'm, I want to say the following. It's perfectly clear that in a democratic country, the the defense forces depend, of course, on the, civil, on the political. The thing is that if anything during the time of war, of course, the war must be conducted by the defense forces. The question is, who in, in Israel is the force that must control the army and the basic war of the army says that the government, the government is in charge of the army. We're not going into the details but I must say that the government is in fact the commander of the army. And it also says the uh, cabinet is also responsible for matters of the army. And then the Vinograd committee also has decided, says that, from procedural point of view, when the cabinet did not unite in order to check all the possibilities, that was one of the reasons of the problems we saw in the Second Lebanon War. So the cabinet is the commander of the army. As a consequence of that, when we talk about this matter, people must be united, they must decide in a speedy way, and everyone must decide at his level. And I also want to thank you, our institute does not deal with army matters, but we simply want to bring a proportion and compare different professional departments deciding about things.
We're all in an effort. It's also an effort of national security. The National Security Council should also be an important part of decision making. I thank you all also for the correction that were brought. <laughs> Saving my honor was also something that I had to do. What is the Yom Kippur of our generation? What is the next thing that would put some doubt in the way we conceive the system? We must look for a place when we don't see realize what our faults are and considering the challenges we face the things that happened during the Yom Kippur war was something uh, completely clear we must find something that is really known uh, something that was so clear to us that we were completely blind to it and to its consequences. We got used to its smell, as they say. I think that a few things, one of them was mentioned before. The big challenge today is the one coming from the Palestinian. At the level of many fronts and there is always a limit to what the, the, Palesti the Palestinian problem is, uh, can create a multi-front uh, problem, but will, will Iran sacrifice Hezbollah for the Palestinian cause? This is something most unlikely an extreme and also the conception is that let's say what is the limit of the uh, story of the temple mount is something that would bring a total war this is also one point if Iran decides on a war there will no doubt that there will be a Palestinian element in it, but on the contrary, the contrary is not very clear. Another point is the regular forces of the army. And there is an important, there is an important joint work of uh, uh, intelligence and fighting. No doubt that the possibility to collect intelligence is a very important element in preparing the fighting units to accomplish the duty. We, in a war, this uh, joint force will give us possibility of maneuvering and also give us the element of surprise. I'm convinced that it will succeed, and I think that the people of the Yom Kippur War also believed that it would work, and when such a thing fails, it brings people into quite a deep despair. And I believe that today, the technological systems that we own and the way we trust them uh, are something good. The next matter is uh, the worry about the Yom Kippur generations is the Radwan force. The generals who were uh, those who lived the Yom Kippur war Radwan, after he finished the war in Syria, he sat on the frontier and potentially 
his possibility of maneuvering is the capability to cause damage. And then what we try to understand or imagine is what is different in their eyes. It was very similar to the story. And here we have had a very uh, serious consideration in order to find out what intelligence would add to the picture. And we have reached the same conclusion. And the same conclusion was reached as it was before the Yom Kippur War, that it would not happen. But then we realized that it was too similar to the words and feelings related to the pre-Yom Kippur War period. And last, I want to talk about two years to the bomb in Iran. We, what are the things that we have done that we have we are proud of having done but in any case we remain that Iran can have the bomb in two years if not shorter and then the chief of staff of the United States in front of the Congress American Congress said between four to six months. Is the period needed by Iran to have the bomb in case it decides to have to do it? And of course, then people try to find out why the evaluation is not is so far from being correct. So, again, that was related to our choosing to decide how we would act in a similar situation, how long it would take us. And that, of course, is like applying your logic to that of the enemy and uh, reaching a wrong decision. Last word about the failure of the intelligence. I am very much in agreement with the uh, lecture at the beginning of the day about deduction, deductive people and the logical complications they got involved with. The problem is that when you have a deductive theory, you must at once ask yourself what intelligence information can destroy it. Those who know this philosophical doctrine, you say then, you must tell yourself, in case I get, I get an intelligence report saying this and this, my whole theory is destroyed. We, are, we shall choose to annihilate it. And that's the difference we have between the social sciences and the life sciences, where you can say, you can never say, in our case, I've got something that negates, that annihilates my theory, but in any case, I'll continue thinking the same ways. I'm thinking about the very uh, clever people who were in the, in the field of intelligence. And time and again, all of them, as one body, as one person, look at the letters and the protocols. That group of, I believe, the, I hope that's the picture behind the seat of the head of the intelligence, and they all, all of them, they, they continue with the same theory and they accept all the signs as exact, the exact opposite of what they mean. Consequently, 
הלקח שהופק הוא היה לקח כל כך עמוק, שהוא גנר גם שינויים מבניים, גם שינויים בחינוך של האנשים, גם בהשכלה של האנשים. When they realized that such a situation came out, they had to make incredibly big changes. And one of the results was research institutes like this one, and it helps us to change a bit the notions of people who grew up together and have their ways of thinking. We are not talking only about theory, but research and reconsidering even basic resources. As a result, something positive, the Yom Kippur War, from a military point of view, not politically, at the end it was one of the most brilliant victories of, the, uh, all of, uh, of history, of all history. The most important thing in the army is not the victory, no, maybe yes it is, but on the same level, it is the possibility to revitalize yourself. And the possibility of the army and the country to be revitalized, considering the place where that process started, makes us salute that generation of people who were really made of steel, and they had incredible defenses and strength and, and many people in this room, in this hall, are part of that generation. We are very, very critical and all that, but this generation is a special one. It was a difficult war and it was successful. Thank you. Again, there will be many discussions about the quality of the war, the type of things involved and everything. No one really wanted to listen to the warnings. The explanation is that if you have a series of of an army doing exercises and maneuvers in order to improve itself, every additional warning that you get looks like a part of that maneuver because cognitively you unconsciously reject anything that doesn't comply with your view of the matter. What you say is correct. Things like that have been said in the academic circles. It's something genealogical. In academia, they were much more critical about that. 